there's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Certain patterns have been working really well. This week's fuzz bite report just keeps snapping it off the bottom. This is just a remarkable concentration of fish. Real good fish. Oh, she looks so nice. Wow. Unreal. Look at that. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On today's show, we're talking about big water smallmouth. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. I'm James Linder. You know, across the upper Midwest, big water means the Great Lakes. And today we're talking about my personal favorite fish, smallmouth bass. Mine too, absolutely. No question about it. Right now, this is absolute prime time for catching big smallmouths in the Great Lakes. And the interesting thing is, is when you look at these fisheries, these are probably some of the finest bass fisheries we have. It's unbelievable because I know a lot of the uh, professional bass tournament anglers, when they come up here, they love coming up here because of the, not only the size structure of the fish, but the numbers of them. Yeah, when they, when they come up here and they're getting into schools, you're not fishing maybe 10 or 20 fish, you're fishing 100, 200 fish, fish yes. when you're going to the Great Lakes for smallmouth. So right now, let's get right to it. This is big water smallmouth. The Angling Buzz region of the Midwest is blessed with lots of fantastic fishing. You name the species and we've got them. Walleye, muskie, trout, salmon, panfish, catfish, pike and bass. Now in the past couple of years, northern bass fishing has come into the national spotlight. We have unbelievable bass fisheries. Now we may not have double digit fish, but tons of two to five pounders. Interestingly, Many of these fisheries are somewhat overlooked because there are just so many waters and so many different kinds of fish to target. And some may say, a bass is a bass is a bass. Now nothing could be further from the truth. All bass, smallmouth, largemouth, and spotted bass are unique fish with specific preferences for habitat, food, and seasonal movements. Largemouth bass tend to do best in darker water with lots of shallow cover like weeds or wood. Smallmouth, on the other hand, tend to do better in deeper, clear water environments. Now, habitat, forage, water quality, and other environmental conditions will determine how fish move, survive, or thrive in any lake, river, or reservoir. And you know what's nice about this time of year when, when we're talking about smallmouth bass and talking about big water fishing is you have this concentration of smallmouth bass that are a lot easier to target. You know, uh, you know other times of the year they kind of go out to space, but right now is a great time to catch them. You're absolutely right about that. The one thing when you look at these big water environments, the fit are, you know, throughout the summer months, these fish are spread out over vast areas. And they, when they come into these bays and these shallow water flats in spring, like this time of the year, you have vast areas coming into a relatively small areas and the biggest thing they're very easy to find you know what i mean you can sit there and put look at a map look at the shallow bays look at the shallow flats that's where you want to go and you've seen also waves of fish come in you're just sitting in one spot and you just see new waves of fresh smallmouth are coming in right now you get a flat calm day when they start coming in you look at the bottom and you could just see the ravenous horde <laughs> moving up out of these flats and it's fun boy <laughs> that, it, that it is really cool. is that is cool yeah. hey uh we got a short break right now when we come back we have our highlight destination feature as well as the first of our buzz bite reports as angling buzz continues Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. 
At Donalinga Auto, the customer comes first. That's why they've been in the automotive business for over 50 years. They pride themselves in making real connections with real people. They're auto experts and active community supporters. Buying, leasing, new or pre-owned, Donalinger's top-notch service stands above. They'll keep you on the road and on the water. Stop in for a visit to see the excellent variety or shop at home at DonalingerAuto.com. According to Minnesota's Department of Natural Resources, in 2017, 97% of boaters surveyed by watercraft inspectors followed Minnesota's clean drain dispose laws. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Coming up next is our highlight destination feature. We're talking about smallmouth bass today, big water, timing. This is a great time of year, as, as you were mentioning before, but also timing when it comes to weather conditions. One thing I can say about the Great Lakes or any of these situations at this time of the year, stability is big. If we get three, four, five days of those warming trends, that's really good. The other thing in the Great Lakes environments or these big water venues, you want wind blowing into the bays. And that brings, it actually concentrates and piles up the warm water in these up on the shallow flats and inside the bays. When you get offshore winds, what happens is it blows the warm water out and sucks in cold water. So, you know, there is a little bit of a reversal. And the interesting thing is, is in these Great Lakes environments, you've got a lot of current, wind-induced current. And that's a big thing that determines whether and how fast these fish move up onto these flats. Yeah, wind can definitely be your friend when you're talking about big water smallmouth fishing. And you also want to pay attention to the weather conditions, obviously the future forecast, because the wind can pick up really fast out there and you can be in some pretty big ways. But right now, let's take a closer look at some brown bass hotspots. Throughout the Great Lakes, early season smallie fishing is generally associated to large, shallow rock, rubble, and sand flats. The best areas tend to be in depths from 4 to about 15 feet of water. Smaller, wind-protected bays tend to concentrate brown bass in early spring with water temperature in the 40s. As water temperature rises into the 50s, main lake flats will also see schools of fish. Wind is a big deal here and can dramatically affect water temperature and fish movement. In general, wind blowing into bays and flats brings fish in, while offshore winds will suck in cold water and blow fish out. You know, we're in Grand Traverse Bay right now and it has incredible visibility. And a lot of the waters we fish, you don't have that good of visibility. And what I'll do is spend a lot of time driving around with side imagery on these flats to really isolate the biggest boulders. The fish that move up onto these flats, they really have the tendency to really gravitate to the, the largest rocks on there, like that one right there, that's a winner. <laughs> you wanna put a, a waypoint right on that big boulder right there. Here, you got some more big ones out here on both sides of the boat. But what I'll do is I'll spend, you know, an, an hour just driving around out on these big flats, just really keying in to find the best spots on these structures. Great big boulders, that's the key spots where the fish are gonna move in. When they move up onto this flat, that's exactly where that fish is gonna be fishing and sitting at. When I work back through here, I'll just cast right through those coordinates. And the other, th other thing, a lot of times you get up on these flats and you just have like subtle depressions up on these flats and you're casting into these uh, uh, depressions, you know, they sort of like turquoise and then the lighter spots are sort of sandy colored. Then you get a, like a deeper depression, looks sort of turquoise and we're pitching right into those locations. Today we're fishing on Grand Traverse Bay of Lake Michigan. Here's a few more brown bass hotspots around the Great Lakes. Lake Superior, Shawamigan Bay. Lake Michigan, Sturgeon Bay, and the whole Door County Peninsula. This includes Washington Island. There's also a lot of bass in Big Bay and Little Bay Dinoc to the north. Lake Huron, go to Saginaw Bay. Lake Erie, both eastern and western basins have tremendous smallmouth bass fisheries. On Lake Ontario, Henderson Harbor, and Chamont Bay are just a few of the many areas to hunt whopper brownies. You know, when you think about trophy hunting for largemouth bass, 
You think of maybe big swim baits, big bait casters, heavy line, but when you think about trophy hunting for big smallmouth bass in the Great Lakes, like we're talking about, it's two spinning rods and tiny little baits. You can keep it real simple and very easy. That's one thing when you're fishing these clear water environments and for smallmouths, it's sort of odd in the fact that we're using two inch baits. Three inch bait would be actually a larger profile bait, you know, tubes, uh, swim baits, little hair jigs. But the thing is, is that you, these fish are just coming out of their wintering areas. When they first come up, the fish are a little lethargic and you want to, uh, your presentation to move relatively slow. You put it in front of them and re retrieve it slow and all of a sudden you, you go, Woof, woof. <laughs> and yeah. you set the hook and you got a bulldog on. <laughs> it's fun fishing, no question about it. It's one of my absolute favorite uh, times of the year and favorite fish to fish for, no yeah, question about yeah. it. And speaking of fish, it's time for the first of our Buzz Bite reports. For our first report, let's go to Leech Lake where Jason Freed is chasing walleyes. For the most part, it's still a jig in the middle bite. Northland jigs, the long shank jigs from Northland Tackle, uh, as well as the stand-up ones or simple fireball jigs are all producing with either shiners, rainbows, or fatheads. When, it's, when the bite's a little bit tougher, try downsizing and working that jig slow. Cadence is the key right now. Dragging it, popping it, swimming it, all works. It just depends on the time of day and the conditions on the lake. Lindy rigs and leeches as well, as well as slip bobbers. East side of the lake, you want to focus more so on the uh, major points on the east side of the lake, five mile battle, sugar, and so on, especially if the wind's blowing in from a westerly direction. And on the west side of the lake, Flats that are adjacent to spawning grounds, windblown shorelines, and windblown points are all producing anywhere from 8 to 12 feet of water. So it's a great time to be on Leech Lake, great fishing to be had. Get out here and enjoy it. Thanks, Jason. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have more buzz bite reports to come as angling buzz continues. For the bass that thinks it's a bulldog. For the walleye that thinks it's a freight train. For the tuna that thinks it's a torpedo. For the tarpon that thinks it's a tarpon. You need the mono that thinks it's a braid. Suffix Advance, new advanced mono with HMPE braid molecules for strength, abrasion resistance, and low stretch. Suffix Advance, the mono that thinks it's a braid. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. From lawn mowers to lawn games, Fleet Farm has what you need to get the best backyard on the block. Whether it's season it, smoke it, grill it season. Green Thumb is an understatement season. Or even, this is the life season. There's a reason people say, if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, you don't need it. Because we have it all. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Help your engine run smoother and last longer with Seafoam Marine Pro. Get it today at Fleet Farm. And while you're there, enter for a chance to win this boat in the Seafoam Marine Pro sweepstakes. Seafoam Marine Pro, available at Fleet Farm. Okay, let's do it. Wow, that's a big boy there. It's unbelievable. Look at the size of that beast. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. For our next report, we're going to check in with Billy Rosner on one of Minnesota's walleye factories, Lake Vermilion. The bite should just keep getting better and better here. We have some warm weather this past week here, so that's going to get these bigger females. They're going to start getting on the feed bank a little more, and they're going to be wandering down these shorelines. Watch your electronics, get out on that first break, slow down your presentations, and you should get in a pretty good walleye bite. Uh, rip and wraps are working also on your plastics too. And in some areas, you're gonna see a little bit of weed growth already. Focus on those areas also. 
Temperatures are warming up pretty quick in some of these south facing bays. Get up in there in the afternoon shallow, you should get into a good crappie bite. Those, a lot of your areas too, those same areas where the crappies are, there's a pretty good pike bite going on right now. Uh, small inline spinners like your blue fox, your meps, like number fours, small spinner baits and spoons should put pike in the boat. Now let's head over to Joe Segura in the Alexandria region of Minnesota. Well, we've been enjoying a pretty good start to the walleye season already this year. Getting a good bite in 8 to 10 foot of water when there's some low overcast or some wind blowing in. And then if it gets a little calmer, move out to about 12 to 15 foot of water. But uh, jigging a minnow or lindy rigging a minnow, moved real slow through these areas has been the, the key, pretty key. Uh, just uh, hop from location to location and, and definitely if there's wind, uh, play the wind. And, that, and that's been uh, working out real well for us. Um, but uh, I can just show you here quickly. Like on the jig here, I'm just simply going through the mouth and out the back for a minnow there. And uh, low light, I'll be pitching it in real shallow um, in the rocks. And then of course, as it gets lighter, I slide out farther and farther and it's been uh, working out real well. Getting some good numbers of 15 to, uh, I suppose 15 to 18 inch fish has been real common. And then a couple over fish right now. Not really hitting a lot of the real big females yet. Um, but we have a water temp of almost 60 degrees or 60 some degrees already. So it's going to happen real soon here. Um, we're warming up fast and I look forward to a pretty strong bite in the area here. Thanks Joe. Now let's get the latest report from central Minnesota from Captain Josh Hagemeister. The walleyes are cruising these sand gravel flats just outside the spawning areas where they were a week or two ago, feeding on shiner minnows and small perch, especially where there's small patches of weeds growing. Now these flats are pretty good size, so I'm covering the water quickly, and I like to do it with a Berkeley Flicker Shad, a number five or a number seven, in this shiner perch type of color. I want to try to imitate the live bait that they're going after. I'm trolling these babies about a half to one mile per hour, about 30 yards behind the boat, on eight to 10, eight to 10 pound test monofilament, uh, attached with a cross lock snap to the eye of the bait. Once I find an area where I've caught a couple of fish, I put these away, and I get out my lead head jigs, an eighth or a quarter ounce, long shank, and I'm putting a Northland Impulse plastics on there. Kind of take the place of a real minnow. You can fish these a lot more aggressively, a lot faster. Get those half lethargic fish to really smack down on the bait. So keep that in mind, the Northland Impulse plastics, about two and a half, three inches long, natural colors again on your lead head jig. Now let's head over to northern Wisconsin where Jeff Evans has a little bit of everything going. Crappies are staging in anywhere from six to nine feet of water. Locating weed growth has been key to finding fish, and we're catching them on small jigs like that panfish cobra, tipped with a plastic underneath a slip bobber. Post-spawn walleyes and pre-spawn smallmouth have been grouped together on a lot of lakes in less than 12 feet of water. Lipless cranks like this rip and wrap worked off the bottom have been really effective if you like to fish fast. If you need to slow down, you can always go back to a jig in a minnow or a slip bobber in a minnow. The smallmouth bass on Shawamigan Bay are moving shallow. We're catching fish there in anywhere from four to eight feet of water on suspending crankbaits and slow sinking plastics. And the trout and salmon bite continues to be strong with shallow running crankbaits behind planer boards putting a lot of fish in the boat. For our last report of the show, let's head over to Michigan where Captain Ben Wolf has been taking advantage of the warming water. You know, we've got some fantastic weather now. Things are really actually starting to heat up a little bit, including the post-spawn walleye bite has still been hot. You know, we're just casting to uh, the first break adjacent to the spawning gravel, and we're looking for post-spawn, you know, with jigs, jigging wraps, um, you know, soft plastics. You know, you could really get some really nice walleye right in the middle of the day. The smallmouth bass, we've got our first wave of spawners up shallow, onto the beds, you know, across the state, whether it's uh, smallmouth bass and largemouth bass as well. And also, we've got some salmon being caught, some really nice sized salmon down in the southern uh, portion of the state, you know, Muskegon, South Haven, that area. And we're seeing some really nice lake trout action up shallow in 40 feet. And they're starting to move into the shallows to feed. That Cisco bite is still happening up on Grand Traverse Bay. We've got some fantastic fishing for you sportfishmichigan.com. Thanks, Ben. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have cool products and the technique of the week as angling buzz continues. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. 
Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. Help your marine engine run smoother and last longer with Marine Pro from the makers of Seafoam Motor Treatment. Just pour it in. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Seafoam Marine Pro, available at Fleet Farm. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. Today we're talking about bass, smallmouth bass. We're going to start out right here. You may have heard in the Ned Rig, this has really come on strong recently, a very, very effective technique. Basically what you do is you take one of these T finesse TRDs, put it on a small little jig head, and you pretty much just drag it along the bottom. Smallmouth and largemouth absolutely love it, especially when the fishing is tough. This is a finesse TRD also in this series, the Hog Z, as well as their Craw Z. And a few things from Northland Tackle. Over here, a swim bait, the Impulse swim bait. This is a nice crappie color. Very, very durable plastic. It has the Impulse scent in there. Uh, really high quality, soft plastic baits from Northland Tackle. And also from Northland over here, the Tough Tube. It's nice, this is an internally weighted tube, which is nice, you don't have to mess with anything. You open it up and you cast it. The soft plastic is very, very durable. It comes in a lot of different colors. The Tough Tube Mimic Minnow series from Northland Tackle. Front and center here from VMC, a few different hooks. We're gonna start out with the Tokyo Rig. Now you can adjust this. You just bend the wire, put a bullet sinker on there, bend the wire up, and what this is made to do is penetrate through very thick cover. Fish this on heavy line, heavy braid or heavy fluorocarbon. A very, very effective technique. It's really come on strong. It's a pretty cool little rig. Check this out, the Tokyo Rig from VMC. And Nico hooks. I love these. I, I use these a lot, actually. This is the Finesse Nico. They have a little fluorocarbon keeper, so you can actually Texas rig this as well as Wacky rig this. This is the Finesse Nico, and then the regular Nico right here. This does not have uh, the little fluorocarbon keeper. I use these as drop shot hooks, and primarily I use these for Wacky rigging. And also, if I'm fishing around cover, I would use the Weedless Nico. It has a nice little guard there. And when you're fishing you know, wacky rigs, this is, this is pretty awesome. This is the Nico skirt. So this adds a little bit extra action to the bait. So you just put this into the soft plastic, put it on a Nico hook, and just the slightest movement, and these things will float up like that. Very effective, especially on pressured fish. And for line, fluorocarbon is just fantastic. This is from Suffix, the castable Invisalign. This is perfect for smallmouth bass fishing. Uh, they have a winding technology here that keeps the line nice and straight off the spool. It's very durable. This is from Suffix, the castable Invisalign. Now all these products, they're available online at fleetfarm.com. Of course, you can get them at your local Fleet Farm store as well. And right now, well, it's time for our technique of the week. A smallmouth bass on a hair jig. What do you know, Ron? <laughs> a good way to get on these shallow, finicky pre-spawn fish. Fish, yeah. A lot of times, you know, guys fish the hair jig just around the pre-spawn 
and you know that colder shallower water but you can fish this thing throughout the entire year and you know I think guys limit themselves when they fish it you know just for a couple weeks from the pre-spawn while those bass are shallow you know that five foot or less but when they get out deeper open up your options and trying a hair jig can really really pay off big. When you get out in you know like eight to fifteen foot of water what a lot of guys will do is uh, simply drag a hair jig and they'll can make a long long cast they actually let out some line and do like controlled drifts over big expansive flats. So very, very similar in the way that a lot of guys in the Great Lakes uh, uh, drag a tube on the bottom. A lot of times they do that. It's a really, can be a really effective presentation. It's a, one thing I can say about hair jigging, it's probably the most subtle out of any type of bass presentation to fish. Hair jigs are not the only baits that cast for these early pre-spawn smallies. Finesse swim baits and grubs are also good options. Depending on the target depth, we start with a VMC Half Moon and Finesse Half Moon jig in weights from 1 16th to 1 8th ounce. Some people may think these heads are way too light. In early season, cool water conditions, it's critical to fish slow moving baits. Soft baits of choice, 3.5 Big Bite Suicide Shad, Cane Thumper, or a Grub. As far as plastic color goes, we tend to pick natural colors that match the water color. Another bait we cast a lot is small tubes. Big Bites two and a half inch tube, again interior weighted with a 1 16th and 1 8th ounce finesse half moon jig. This lightweight head minimizes getting hung up on the zebra mussel encrusted rocks. A lot of times with the tube, the best retrieve is to simply drag the bait on the bottom. We're fishing with uh, really long rods, more parabolic, softer action rods. This is actually a St. Croix a uh, hair jig drop shot rod, and your rod and reel is really critical to uh, cast a really lightweight bait like that. Beautiful fish. We'll get her back in the water. Boy, is she a tank. Wow. And some of you would say, well, look, what, why is your, your braid bright yellow? Well, the thing is, is I actually have a pretty long length of a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, anywhere between uh, seven to as long as in some cases, Ron likes to fish almost 15 foot of fluorocarbon or lighter monofilament leader. But the thing is, what I like about this really bright colored line is to be able to distinguish a strike. It's a real soft strike in a lot of times because the bait isn't moving very quickly and they just overtake it from the back and all of a sudden it just stops. But it's really a great technique to catch a lot of really big smallmouths in super clear conditions like this. It's amazing how effective small profile baits like that can be for triggering giant smallmouth to bite. Yeah, and speaking of effective baits, make sure to tune in for next week's show because we're gonna be talking about the world's best fishing lure. Hey, we wanna remind you as always to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species anytime you're leaving any body of water clean, drain, and dry. And make sure to head over to your local Fleet Farm store because our friends from Seafoam are giving away a rigged Lund boat. And here at the Angling Buzz, we have our own sweepstakes going on. We're giving a weekend stay at a resort up on Lake Vermilion. You can enter online at fleetfarm.com, also in store. Hey, thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Nick Linder. We will see you next time.